Are you ready for the bear show? Yeah! Well, good. We better get started then. First of all, on behalf of the Clark family and all of our staff, I would like to welcome you to Clark's Training Post. This is the home of Clark's Training Bears and the White Mountain Central Railroad. My name is Murray Clark. I'm the youngest of two who work with the bears here. Also today, in the ring, you'll see my sister, Maureen Clark. And out of the two of us who work with the bears, I consider myself to be the most handsome. <laughs> Not quite the reaction I was hoping for, but I'm used to it. Now you're here to see the bears perform, but before we bring them out to do that, we'd like to give you a little bit of background information to make this educational as well as entertaining. So we'll cover a few facts and figures associated with these beautiful creatures. Now my family started business here back in 1928, originally known as Ed Clark's Eskimo Sled Dog Ranch, the main attraction in those days was beautiful dogs of the north. About 1930, it was determined we needed something extra to draw in the summer visitors who were passing us by out here on Route 3. We acquired black bears, and we've been at it ever since. Now, on a busy day such as this one, you may find as many as 20 of my family out here amongst our staff waiting to serve you, and I do hope we make your visit here a pleasant one. We'd like for you to come back and see us again sometime. Now back to the bears. At this time, our bear family numbers nine. We have five on display in these enclosures over the back, and we've got an additional four across the street in two separate habitats. More about them in a moment. Now, by far, the most common question that's asked of us about the bears is, how long do they live? And the answer comes in two parts. Out here in the woods of New Hampshire, we currently have an estimated population of wild bears that approaches 4,500 head, and they're on the increase. We'll probably never know how many for sure, though, because every time they hold a census, no one shows up. <laughs> However, they are very common here in the White Mountains of New Hampshire. Yesterday, on the uh, cover of the Manchester Union Leader, one of the newspapers here in New Hampshire, uh, there was a front page article about black bears in the wild, especially over in Warren, New Hampshire, about 18 miles away. They're seeing more of them, and they're becoming bolder when it comes to looking for food. So I want to tell you, if you're up here on a vacation, you're driving down the back road, you're out there hiking, camping, fishing, you may see a wild bear. And if you do, please stay away from them. Don't try to get close. Do not feed them. And most of all, don't offer up a family member to have a picture taken with a nice bear. <laughs> it ends badly for all those involved. Now currently, the Fish and Game Department tells us the average life expectancy for a bear out there is not very long. Somewhere in the neighborhood of four to six years. Perhaps a bit longer if they're lucky. Shame on Mother Nature and shame on mankind. We do better here. Our bears have a guaranteed living, balanced diet, and we protect them. They're our personal property, our pets, and we extend their lives greatly over that of their wild cousins. The oldest one we have at present we will not see today. She's across the street in special quarters. She's living in a retirement community. She's over there with peace and quiet and shade. She has two houses to choose from, her own private swimming pool, two meals a day. She is collecting social insecurity, <laughs> Medicare, and the meager interest they pay on her personal savings account. I'm speaking of a bear we've had here for many years. Her name is Moxie. She was abandoned by her mother in the woods of Vermont when she was a sickly little bear cub. And thanks in part to the Vermont and the New Hampshire Fish and Game Departments, we were able to take her in, rescue her if you will. We nursed her back to health in the kitchen of our home across the way. I remember as a teenager, little Moxie running around the kitchen getting into mischief. Down come the curtains, off comes the tablecloth, all of the soft furniture gets chewed up, and the house is in disarray. We would bottle feed her, and at night sleep with her on the couch to keep her safe and warm. Then in the morning, she would get into my old G.I. Joe collection and chew their heads off. Today, Moxie is 28 years of age. And that's not a record. The all-time best we've ever done, raising up a little cubby into old age, he's laid to rest in the flower garden right over there. And there are bears buried over here, some of our finest show bears in history. But the one I'm speaking of, we called an old fella. He lived with us here 38 years, seven months. 
And we believe that is an all-time record for the North American black bear. Now many people are curious, where do the bears go in the winter months? Well, our bears stay here. They den up and go to sleep inside the wooden houses that you see, be it on this side of the road or the other. If we have more than one bear in an enclosure, we provide additional housing. That way they can sleep together or separately. The arrangement is up to them. We board up the openings on the house except for one. That way they can come in and out as they so choose. We provide them with hay. They take it inside and they make a nest out of it. Kind of a bowl-shaped depression. And that's where they sleep for the balance of the winter. They do awaken occasionally and eat a small quantity of snow to help replenish body moisture given off during respiration. A black bear in their winter den is not dead to the world. You cannot reach in, pull them out, play with them, and put them back again without their knowledge. They're ready to jump up and fight for their life or run for their life. Now we stop feeding our bears here on December 7th. From that point forward, no breakfast, lunch, or supper for three and a half months. Now, if you think it's a hardship, think about the poor bears out there. They go without food four and a half to five months every winter. Farther north of Canada is even longer than that. And they can only do it if they fatten up sufficiently in summer and fall and live on the fat tissue stored in their bodies. Now, those are just a few of the bear facts. The bear show started here in 1949. That was the year my father Murray and my uncle Ed decided they would teach and train little cubbies for show work. Sadly, both my uncle and my father have since passed away. But now my sister Maureen and I will continue to do the show as best we can. They would have wanted it that way. They always told us that show must go on. But before we start, two little things. First off, this is a painting done by one of our old show girls, Victoria. Currently, she's asleep over here. Like Grandma Moses, our 23-year-old Victoria started her painting career rather late in life. Currently, she's in her impressionist mode. However, these are individually unique, distinctive paintings, and we are selling these over here inside the photo pilot building or in the main gift shop. If you'd like something very special to bring home, you got it right there. Now, one other thing, this little teddy bear needs a new home. During the show, we're going to give it away to one of you folks. And here's how it's done. You need your general admission ticket. It's a rectangular piece of paper about so long. You got it at the railroad station on the way in. On the bottom are numbers. Those numbers will determine the winner. So if you could have the tickets out and ready to go, you make my job of finding you that much faster. Now I want to thank you all very much for listening so quietly and patiently. We're going to bring out our first performer, a professional showgirl by the name of...